Hello. Um, so, bonjour, bonsoir. bonsoir. We, are We are right, right now, now in Versailles. Versailles. So, Marie from My Pride Paris. And Bertrand from My Pride Paris. So, we're very, very happy to welcome you in Versailles tonight. So we're going to have a great show. We're going to visit the garden. And tonight, our expert on Versailles is, of course, Bertrand. He made uh, another live about the castle. Maybe you can talk just a little bit about it. Sure. Um, we started this series of live tours in April when we were all uh, locked down in Paris. Now, you will see that it's no longer the case. There are quite a lot of people tonight. Yes, uh, unfortunately, we're not the only one. We didn't actually privatize the castle. Not this time. We, we tried, but we, we had to share a little bit. <laughs> and so we did a, a tour of the inside of the palace, which is just here. Just here. Uh, you can find it on our YouTube uh, channel or even plan a private tour. Why not? Mm -hmm. uh, we're always happy to do that for you. And today we are very excited because for Marie and I, it's the first time we are actually going to see the fountains yes, at the, night. Yes, the fountain show. So it's my very first fountain show at night uh, for Bertrand as well and uh, for a few people you will see uh, also on the way. But uh, we are very lucky because it's not the night time yet. So we're going to see the sunset on Versailles. I mean, this is amazing. I'm just so excited. And uh, okay, so maybe we're going to just start by sure. where we are. So where are we right now? So we are just by the corner of the south wing of the chateau, mm -hmm. which means right above our head okay. is where the royal family uh, used to live. Not the king and the queen themselves, that we will show you later, but uh, their children, uh, cousins, so the very relatives of the king. The other aristocrats who were lucky enough to have a room here in the chateau were in the northern side, okay. so they don't, like, don't get the sun. Okay. But we also wanted to start here, because you don't see any fountain for now, Not yet. Uh, but we wanted to show you uh, the Orangerie, mm -hmm. which is one of the um, places in Versailles, I like the most because it's quite secret. Okay. Um, we are going to, sorry for my finger, up, switch right Perfect. here. Perfect, wow. Yeah. And Thanks. this is one of the first surprises, Marie, when we take people to Versailles because you, you can't see this from a distance. And it's actually a wonderful part of the chateau where you have hundreds of uh, trees that normally would not be grown in northern France. So they're all exotic species? Exactly. They okay. are very exotic species. You have orange trees, uh, lime trees, lemon trees. Um, you, well, maybe you guys can see right there, there are some um, palm trees, which you know, you'd be finding in Florida easily, but not here in Paris. Because it was, it was something quite common for the kings to make a land like, of trees, right? Like it was, it was something Having a collection of trees was uh, like fancy, kind of, right? Exactly. The, the thing is, when this is built in the 1600s, um, the young king of the time, known as Louis XIV, but he loved to be called the Sun King, and today we can understand why. Um, it is part also of uh, the king's role to show the extent of the kingdom. And if we can have here exotic trees, it's also because France is starting to grow a, an empire, a colonial empire, especially in America. It's the, the moment where uh, the uh, Quebec, etc., will are joining uh, or are invaded by the French troops, uh, to be more uh, specific. And so uh, being able to showcase all these trees is also a way for the king to say, this is the extent of my kingdom. I'm not just king here at Versailles. My kingdom is all around the world. And so tell us more about the gardener that makes, uh, because this is, this is typically Jardin à la Française, so the French style garden. Exactly. This, all of Versailles is, uh, I mean, the part we will see today, it's this uh, French garden, which is about showing that uh, the hand of man can master nature. We have been sent here on earth by God uh, to rule over other species and over nature. Uh, at least that's the philosophy of the time, and we will not... Uh, be the same today, yes. And you will see that everything is um, obviously artificial, which is to show that it has been man-made, and it's to show also that the the strength of the mind is uh, much bigger than uh, the forces of nature. Okay, so so how large is the garden? Because we can see from here uh, mostly a platform, so it's not we're not yet in the garden. So you you notice the orangery is a bit down from where we are. So how, how large is it? Like, like 
how many hours do we have to spend here to see everything? <laughs> Two days. Okay. <laughs> uh, if you want to see everything at Versailles, it's over two days. Uh, if you spend half a day, you can see the inside of the palace, a little bit of the garden, just the terrace that we will see now, and um, and that's about it. Um, but if you spend a full day, then you can get also to the Queen's estate. But there is, maybe you can see behind me, there's a, a pointy uh, thing. A, a, um, yeah, yeah you can see it. Mm -hmm. And so behind there, you have the King's Fruit and Vegetable Garden, which is also an incredible place uh, to visit, much less crowded than the uh, uh, regular gardens. The city of Versailles has amazing markets. Uh, it has been voted for several years the number one in the whole Paris region. That's another uh, thing to visit. And the city itself has a couple other museums. So if you really want to see all of Versailles, uh, it's on um, two days. Okay, but um, so but we only have one hour. Yeah, and so tonight is going to be an hour. But in general, we do tours for one day, and in one day you can see a lot already. Yes. Um, in one day you cover the royal estate. Okay. But if you want to see Vers, because what people are usually surprised when uh, they do tours with us here is that Versailles is not just the palace, but it's also a city, a city of thousands of people, uh, where the French aristocracy has lived. Uh, for a little bit more than a hundred years. So obviously they built a magnificent mansions, um, not as beautiful as the royal palace, of course, you don't want to be uh, to shine brighter than the king, but there are still some uh, great places to see. So, so today we're not going to see the city, unfortunately, but we're going to see the gardens. And um, so we didn't dress exactly like, um, like our, we're our going usual. To, to, yeah, no, no. I mean, we try to make an effort, but that's not that's not my point. We're not in a in a ball dress or costume. So, what would be the fashion at the time? Like, if I if I was wearing something like Marie Antoinette, so would I be like with these very puffy dresses, or, yes. or am I in and the you, right time? Or and you yeah. would be very sorry. Uh, why? Because it was extremely uncomfortable, especially ah, yeah. for ladies, <laughs> uh, to wear these kind of dresses. Yeah. Because first of all, you had a corset that would, you know, shrink your uh, <laughs> your body <laughs> until you can't breathe. Okay. Um, then a very heavy. I mean, we when you see it in movies, you know, it looks pretty. Everybody wants to dress yeah, like that. Yeah, I want to dress like Marie Antoinette. Maybe not everybody, but we do. <laughs> uh, but it was very, very heavy. For it, for instance, when you see Marie Antoinette with her hairdress. Mm -hmm. They would be easily four or five kilos. Oh wow! So it's four or five kilos on top of your head, going like this. So every time you bend your head a little bit, it's you know so much weight that goes. Um, well. Okay, so so maybe not not wearing a dress then. Um, May, maybe for a day. Maybe for a for day. For a day, it's fun. Suffocating and, in my dress, not being able to go to the you know bathroom maybe. <laughs> no, but if you are Marie Antoinette, there's a bathroom uh, boy uh, wait, uh, you know following you, and you will have. Ah, your little best scene. So you have your okay. Actually, I, I heard that people were kind of not having a bathroom, going to the little <laughs> garden where we are. I like that is, we're starting with this. Is it, is, it, is it true or not? No, no. I'm just, I'm just wondering. You know, uh, uh, where the garden is also a place for that? Or yes. okay. <laughs> what, what is? I mean, probably once in a while, uh, you know, someone would take an ease by the uh, inside the palace, but you know, you would more, be mostly in the garden. You would be kicked out. So okay. in the gardens, yes. I mean, okay. you are outdoors. You're in nature. Uh, <laughs> but you know, uh, um, let's let's yeah. show you guys what we see instead of uh, our uh, laughing faces. <laughs> okay, let's do that. And yeah, because we're we're getting to the central part of the garden, sorry, of the of the palace, which is the king's apartment, and all the garden must be seen from there. Obviously, the king is, you know. Well, he wants to have the best. Yeah, but if, I, I, if I would you love were the to king. have the room. I mean, of course, yeah, I will take the, definitely the, the middle room here. Um, but we don't know yet so what was the view. So let's <laughs> let's go there. So you see a lot of people are coming. It's a, it's kind of a family event. I assume a lot yes. of kids are here because um, you won't see that because it's too late. But there is a firework after the uh, Fontaine show. Yes. So, so it's going to be nighttime. So probably, yeah, not very good on the video, but we're going to enjoy the fountain we're, and we're going to share some photos of fireworks that. yeah we're going to share that on the on facebook and instagram okay so we are starting with a, a tiny fountain here <laughs> it's already just, pretty big look at this sun wow okay we're going to move just I'm a little bit here you, uh, you're, to you're the right I'm, I'm not coming that often in versailles well i i have been many times to versailles in the last few years uh this is 
obviously uh, not as much this year. So I'm very, very happy to be here. And as we were saying at the beginning, uh, I've never been to the night show. I've seen the fountains countless times during the day, uh, but never at night because, you know, these things that are so close to your home, you always think, I'll go next week, I'll go next week, etc. So it's every Saturday from uh, early June to end of September. Start at 8.30 uh, p.m. And the fireworks is at 11, and then you call it a night. Okay. So what is your favorite anecdote about Versailles? Like, or, or something that happened to you? Or do you want to share anything uh, as a guide? I mean, like, what is, what is it to be a guide in Versailles almost every day of the, of the year? The great thing is that at Versailles, you are, even though there are people, uh, I mean, tonight, it's, I think it was sold out. Uh, but if you see around, there's space. Inside the chateau, it's different. Uh, for those of you who have taken tours with us, you know that it's great to have our guide's entrance so you skip the line. Uh, but once inside the palace, there are a lot of people. But when you get to the garden, and I think that's the garden that uh, really uh, um, the reason why people should visit Versailles, because it's something that uh, Louis XIV uh, wrote. He said that before being a palace, Versailles was a garden. And before being a garden, it was his dream. And so when you see the main palace, you understand that it's nothing but a stand to look at the garden. The real thing of Versailles is the garden. We are on a land that basically was a swamp, you know, marshy land, the worst place in the world to build a palace, but we did it. And uh, just for the, I don't think that you guys will, will care so much, but um, every time I visit Versailles, I dress in blue, white, and red. Yes. I was uh, noticing that. So, which, so let me let me show. Okay, here we are having Bertrand. So, okay. And so why those colors, Bertrand? The those colors are the colors of the French flag, because I also want to remind everyone when we visit the place here that it's not all about the king, but it's also about the people who built it. Okay. And they were uh, fellow French uh, men, not yet citizens. And so it's also, um, Versailles is a big, big part of our history. And I, I'm quite proud every time I come here to uh, tell that part, not just royal uh, stuff and affairs and the king was doing that, the king was doing this. It's important to understand how the chateau uh, was organized because it's really to showcase the power of the king. But it's also important to remember that this place has been made possible by the will of the king, sure, but also by thousands of men. Um, and, you know, we are their uh, great, great grandchildren. So we need to be Republican here. That's what you mean. <laughs> I mean, I'd rather uh, live in a democracy than having a, a king. I, I guess for a day it's fun, Maybe, especially if you're part of the guests. Let, let's say you, you were the king, okay? So, so... Ah, that is completely different. <laughs> okay, Th so... That is, you should have started by that. Yeah, obviously, <laughs> if I was the king, uh, I would be, you know, uh, trying to support the weight of the role, but I think I'll do a pretty decent thing. I'm sure, I'm sure you will. Okay, so... You're sure I think that, or yeah, you're sure? Yeah, no, no, yeah. Anyway, so yeah, let's, let's go. So I see a lot of people um, here on the platform. You see the sunset and you see a lot of people. Um, we are also here with Maria. She's trying to hide. So Sorry. You, might, you might know Maria, so she's... Our director from communication and she's here in Paris for just uh, just a week and also to take some pictures yeah, so, so that's... you see me running around I'm not I'm not creeping on them I'm just trying to take some nice photos <laughs> Merci, Maria. So she's our special guest uh, also. Right. So you're gonna see her probably um, after the end okay so it's um it's attracting us this music so it's coming from the fountain so what's going yes, on yes 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 that's um, it's been a few years they do this oh. and we have. Oh, I'm sorry. Oh, no. <laughs> it's not working. Yeah, it's working. Um, there are fountains at night, and at the same time, they play music. So it's not live uh, music, it's recorded music, but mm -hmm. still. Uh, and it's music that was composed at, uh, in the 1600s and 1700s. Okay. So it's really music that people would hear uh, back then. Okay. So who is the famous composer? Lully? That's the one? Lully. Um, Ooh, that's a tricky question, Marie. Oh, I'm sorry. Uh, no, I don't know nothing the... about composers, so that's why I was asking. But... Let's okay. say Lily. Let, Lily let's say, let's the... say it's Lily. Lily's the one you have to know as a guide. So, uh... Okay, so now we can see the fountain. Let's have a look. 
All right, here we go. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Sorry, guys. Here we go. Et voilà. Wow. So, yeah, it's, it's the magical view of Versailles. So if we're going uh, in the middle here, we can see an axe. So exactly. you were telling that everything is kind of symmetrical. So maybe, yeah, we can understand more. Uh, oh, sorry. Okay. So if I do this with my hand, no, it's not gonna work. Okay, so, but we can see, we can see the axe, so the main axe that is leading to the Grand Canal, right? Exactly. So that's, that's the water that is, you can see a little bit of uh, thing here. So that's the yeah, Grand the, Canal. The shiny rectangle at the end is, a massive, massive piece of water. Uh, actually, if you walk around it, you would walk uh, over three miles. Mm -hmm. So it takes a good hour. And everything in Versailles is uh, arranged on this axis that goes all the way from the west, where you see that the sun mm -hmm. is uh, setting. And then it, it goes from there and all the way to the east, which is on the other side. If you, up, up, you will see the sun is reflecting on the windows mm -hmm. and so the king's bedroom is right here so right in the middle of the palace if you look left or right it is perfectly in the center just like the sun is in the center of the ah, universe okay so that's why so, that's that the sun king so he went really far like, like he well it's his room also. everything in versailles was built for louis the 14th um, to showcase his idea of power, which is an absolutism, uh, which means that it's he, the king, who has been appointed by God, and there should be no question whatsoever uh, against his authority. And so choosing the sun as an emblem is also a way to challenge or to tell the other aristocrats, it's not to tell the people, the people who's hardly rebelling against the king, but it's to say to his cousins, uh, you know, all the wannabes who wish they could be king, that he is of a different nature, and uh, that's the source of the divine monarchy. So it's me, the sun, and you guys are just planets. Not bad, but you rotate around me. You revolt you, around you, me. You can tell that Bertrand is not a big fan of Louis the Fourteen. I kind of like him. I mean, maybe, no. maybe not for his power, but what he did, he was kind of a uh, aesthetic, right? He like he like art and and over, oh over there, there's some fireworks. I can see that from far. So yeah. I mean, he, he he had the he had class, right? You can yes. say that. Well, <laughs> you you have. Quite often, uh, people here are are thinking that he had a big ego and it was, a, you know, uh, an egomaniac or something like that. We need to remember that the guy was crowned king. He was five years old. Okay, so it's he hardly remembers not being the king. Yeah. And from his childhood, he has been told constantly and constantly that he is his almighty majesty, and that the world belongs to him yeah so it's 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 hard to say that you know that there's always something to do when you look at characters like this it's to make a distinction between who they were in private maybe good maybe bad person it's hard to tell and hard to judge and probably you uh, just like the rest of us you're both um but when you are the king it's different and for instance louis the 14th i'll tell you um, a little anecdote about his youth because he was, um, he was falling in love quite easily. And he promised um, a girl that he would stop ruling to marry her. Obviously, he did not in the end. But he had to break his own art to fulfill his destiny as a king. And so that's the other thing that is important. Is when he builds Versailles, it's not like an ego trip because he's won the lottery and he wants his friends to be uh, humiliated. It is because he's filled with the duty to strengthen the country. Uh, still, he had a pretty big ego. Yeah, there's, there's the bubble machine. Yeah, um, I'm sorry, but I think we do have to do something about it. Okay, so... Um, That's so cool. You don't have that during the day. No, we don't have that. So. Oh, look, there's a, a little girl in a princess dress. Look, we are surrounded by little bubbles. I don't know if you can see, see that, guys. Yeah, uh, with the fountains. <laughs> Loving it! Just having the best time. It's great the things they do here. You have that. Uh, on weekdays, also, they play music. <laughs> they Sorry, I'm, I'm the worst. I'm the worst tourist. You know, I'm just like yeah. I, I mean, see got... and and here. I mean, look at that, guys. Okay, now they are on us. Just loving it. 
Okay, so if you're coming for the show, you might go through those bubbles as well. Okay, we go back to the story. Sorry, Bethel, <laughs> I was distracted. I, I just love it. Okay. So we have a look, Louis XIV with yeah, broken look, hearts. You see, that's that, that's also why Versailles was built. It's a place of entertainment. You, you can't understand Versailles if you don't think show, big show, and show all day, every day. Oh, there is a little princess here. Hello. That's cute. Um, okay, so let's go down here. So you were saying that the gardens were for entertainment, obviously, but um, I also yeah, know there's, king there is also a, a symbolic, you know, about the gardens. I mean, um, they, they mean something. It's not just about beauty. It's also about this symbolic that because of the Sun King was obsessed with this Apollo kind of figure, this uh, Greek shield. Yeah, that's a good point. The aristocracy back then, um, 1600, is uh, educated with the Greek and Latin um, philosophy. They are Christian, they are Catholic, so they don't believe in the Greek gods, etc. But they study these ancient texts. And for instance, the fountain which you're showing uh, right now, Marie, is here to um, illustrate the, um, the youth of Apollo, the god of the sun, who in his childhood was persecuted. The, the reason why is because his mother, who we see on top of the pyramid, uh, was the mistress of Zeus or Jupiter. So Jupiter's wife was not very happy. So she sent a big beast to eat the little baby. Oh. And she tried to find refuge in a province of um, just very close to the city of Troy. It's, I mean, we're in talking mythology here. And they, the, the peasants living there refused to give her shelter. And so the, the scene we see, which is right under the fountain, is her um, asking to Zeus to do something to um, help her out. And so what he's doing is transforming, maybe you can see them, uh, is transforming the peasants into frogs, into reptiles, into crocodiles for not helping Apollo and his mom, uh, Latona. And so this is the founding moment of this garden because Louis XIV was a very young king. He was five years old. And he was also challenged by his very uh, king. He was challenged by his cousins and by the aristocracy when he was just a baby king. And so this is kind of his revenge. It's, okay, you're going to have great time here at Versailles, but it's going to be about me, me, me all the time. And all the time, I'm going to remind you that you are not uh, second to me. I'm of a completely different nature. I am the sun. You're something else. And this axis is all about that. Uh, you can see the sun is... So you, you, were, you think that you were spending more time at night, uh, I mean, having the sun really in the axis here? Or, I mean, is there a routine for a king in this garden? Was he hunting somewhere? Or what, 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 is the, uh, what is the day of a king in a garden, let's say? It's, it's just entertainment or is doing, I don't know, like, for example, have a meeting maybe with, with people for of, serious of things? Of course. Yeah. Seri <laughs> serious and more uh, frivolous. Uh, but yeah, of course. The, the thing is, he has been king living here for decades. So when he started building Versailles, he's 23 years old. And at 23, he's all about hunting uh, and finding a new mistress uh, almost uh, So a lot of business day. then. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, so now we're talking So about it business. also explains why the garden have all these secret spots where you can yeah, have a little Yeah, that's a question uh, I had in privacy. mind. Like, what, what is going on really in those, uh, those gardens? Because there's we'll, so, much, get to that. so much rumors about Marie Antoinette having affairs and, and then the king also. Yeah. So, Ima imagine that in this palace behind us, uh, there were up to 4,000 people living there. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and for 50 years, it's under constant construction. Mm -hmm. So the noise, the dust, uh, I mean, you know, you don't want to be inside too much uh, unless you're sleeping. And so obviously it's... So the real party exactly. is the... out here. Okay. But, oh, no, so we are and, and at first, he's coming to Versailles just for the summer. Okay. So there were parties in the gardens, not inside. Okay. There were plays, plays by Molière, who were written specifically for parties here. Okay. There, there is one party. It lasted seven days and seven nights. Wow. Okay. It's called The Pleasure of the Enchanted Islands. It was supposedly to celebrate the birth of his first 
son with the king the, with the queen mm -hmm. uh, but everybody knew that it was all about his mistress of the time madame de lavalier okay. uh, and then there were other uh, uh, legendary parties and this is how he attracted all these aristocrats because they were parties here like you had never seen before like they were they were a wedding kind of like this kind of yeah, yeah. Al always having thousands of people partying and and the fireworks that started at the time no yes exactly uh, they were not colored like the one we're going to see later uh, tonight but they they started to use uh, powder which was used for military purposes uh, they started to use it for uh, for fireworks and that was the first so everybody was talking about it but also the fountains i mean if you if we turn around uh, <laughs> here you go. Right. Yeah. Okay, we can't see a lot of the fountains here. We, we see let, the palace more. Let, if we zoom just a little bit. So these fountains, they still work today with gravity. Okay. So that means that I'm going to show you guys. Um, up, up, up right there, just above my finger, they are uh, water tanks. Okay, where there's water, they open the tap and then it's because the garden is not flat. So with gravity, the water runs from a fountain to the next, to the next, to the next, to the next. Okay. Wow. Okay, that's clever. So, so and that was never seen but, before. But the, so, but yeah, that was the first time they had fountains like that, right? But uh, is it is it a fashion coming from Italy also? I mean, I heard that the first one who have made those were Italian. So we kind of stole yes. the idea. The the uh, the French elite at the time is fed with ancient Roman history and um, also with the Italian Renaissance. Okay. So the the, God, the the two guys who created the fountain, they were Italian. Mm -hmm. They were called Francini, uh, but their name was changed to Francine to make it look uh, more uh, French. Okay. Um, and the difference between the French garden and the Italian garden is the, the size of it. The Italian garden were much smaller. And also this idea that it opens to the horizon. Uh, which is what you're going to see just there. Yeah, yeah, we saw, we saw the, uh, the yeah, the idea that it's never ending, right? Okay. Exactly. But I see something else here, Bertrand, and I'm very intrigued. What is, what are those? <laughs> I, I want you to pass in those things. <laughs> <laughs> so I, what is going on here? I think that's for the night. I've never seen it before. I'm intrigued. So let's, uh, let's go see that. You can see there's an ice cream parlor next to it, but I guess that's not what... Okay. Mm. Go, go that. Yeah, no, that's fine. It's not dangerous. We're good. <laughs> okay. Pretty cool. Yeah, they really create a. So you see now a more intimate kind of uh, part of the garden. So that's what we call bosque. Bosque. Yes, exactly. And um, yeah, it's it feels like we are in a maze almost turn around everything look kind of the same so i will be kind of lost is that the idea that's that's to be lost it is all around it's, it's exactly the same so okay well i'm, I'm gonna follow bertrand because you know, no? yeah. the idea is to be lost but at the same time it's also to have a place where you, you're not seen which is the point of the maze hmm. um because once again thousands of people living here you know so the um the, the, you can see, guys, that it looks like there are walls uh, made of trees. This is how the, the trees here are uh, uh, pruned to really to, to look like walls and even with a, uh, a ceiling. The roof, yeah. Because this is Versailles. So the guards were quick. I mean, it took years. Uh, but it was here because they come here just for the summer. It was here that they would have uh, parties, that they would have uh, lunches, ah. dinners, plays, balls, etc. Even consul, the king will have his consul here, and quick, easily you can close the gate and, and so it privatize becomes, the place. and private exactly. Wow! Okay, so you like op that. you open it for uh, your uh, your guest, but at the same time you close it for uh, some other ones. And so in the middle of the bosque, we have those tiny fountains compared to the other. Here, uh, so yeah. there is a kind of a light show at night, that's what they say. So they're going to add different lights. Exactly. Oh, yeah, here we are. Ah, interesting. So that was not the case back then, definitely. I, I hope you guys, you can hear us because with the, the, noise, yeah. the, with the noise with the water. But that's pretty cool. And, and it is all working with the same way, which is just gravity. 
there's not an electric engine that is uh, pushing the, the water up. It's just pure gravity with very large uh, pipes. They're made of lead. 80% of it hasn't been changed since the 1660s. Okay. And right before the, uh, the jet, the size, the diameter of the, uh, of the pipe reduces, so the water gets much more pressure, and then it goes all the way up like that. But for the time, it is, it is quite uh, amazing to, to have this. So they would not be running all the time, just like they're not running all the time uh, today still, because uh, it could not work. But on the weekends, morning, afternoon, and on Saturday night, uh, in the summertime only, it's uh, it's working. So that's oh. that's a pretty cool part of it. That's, that's great. So we continue the maze now. And really, I'm thinking about those movies where <laughs> they, they, they're losing people. So, um, yeah, okay, I'm going to keep with Bertrand on this. <laughs> sure. I'm gonna, um, it's not like I'm scared. I just imagine at the time not having electricity, being in the garden at night with your little candle. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> I'm, not, I'm not sure you would be. And anything? Anything bad sense. happened here? Like, yeah, uh, did you, the, what? What things? Like murder and stuff? No. Murders. No. no course, really. Yeah, yeah. Kidnapping. And you, had, and you had police coming here, or was it? Uh... The the security of Versailles back then was a pretty big thing because uh, traditionally the French palace, so where the king lives, is open to his subjects. That's a very very old tradition we inherited. Okay from the first Frankish king, so in the four or five hundreds. Mm -hmm. um, so it's open. And at the same time, the king wants to show his uh, people that he is rich and wealthy, thanks to them, uh, but he's making them rich and wealthy too. Mm -hmm. okay. um, and so the garden is open to everyone, Sorry. which means that you would have some issues with pickpocketing, uh, robberies, just, you know, imagine if, you know, if you have tons of very wealthy people, very well dressed with uh, gold yeah, coins in their pockets. Of course. Of course. Uh, and so also, you know, uh, Versailles was very hard to guard. It's such a large extent. Yeah. Uh, nice. It's 2,300 acres. Mm. Uh, in hectares, it's 830 hectares. Wow. Today, it used to be much bigger. Uh, but the rest was hunting ground. You were asking me about mm -hmm. uh, hunts. And yes, the king was hunting, but not in... Uh, the section where we're walking. Okay. Okay. There is another oh, fountain yeah. here. So we're reaching a let's, really cool fountain. It's the fountain of, of winter. So what do we have here? So there is a man and, and, and it's been re it's been regilded right before the uh, confinement. I haven't seen it like that. Never actually, because the. the so the, the shells, yeah, we can see some shells. Yeah, yeah. It, it's all painted, it's beautiful. It, it is a very Baroque garden. That means that you have plenty of uh, exuberant details all over the place. So uh, maybe you can see that, uh, that there are shells, starfishes, crayfishes, they're all uh, painted. Obviously they're, they're not real, uh, but it's here to be a festival, almost a fireworks of colors, which is the point of the uh, Baroque movement is to have too much of it, but we don't care. We just like it this way. And so this fountain, the old man we see, uh, is the god Saturn. And he is the god of, uh, traditionally is associated with um, older age and winter. Okay, And so he's um, about to devour one of his child, uh, uh, one of his children, sorry. Uh, that was Zeus. That's in the Greek mythology. That's the, the rock we can see here. Mm -hmm. And if we have winter here, it's because we have the four fountains. Ah, the, the, four seasons. the four seasons, yes. The four seasons, the four right in between the four of them because he's the center of universe once again. It's just like being the sun. The, uh, the four seasons rotate around him, which means that he can't be he can't be changed. He can't be uh, overthrown. He's king by the will of God. So what, what would be the point of fighting uh, fate? You know? So if you look to the, to the end out there. There is another one over there. We can't really see it from here, but yeah, I see, I see some water. So that would be? Fall. Fall. Okay. So fall, so I, so fall it's, it's a statue of um, 
uh, I just forgot his name, Dionysus, uh, the, um, the king, the, exactly, the winemaker, the party goer, uh, the tribal child who uh, just do as he wants, goes from city to, to other city. And on the other, we would see the um, fountains of spring and summer. Okay. So, and, and it was, uh, I'm, sometimes it feels like I'm, you know, I, I'm saying the same thing all over again, but it's really the point of Louis XIV is to hammer in the mind of his fellow um, aristocrats that he is just of a different kind. He is king. It's it's a almost a, a sacred title. But we have something else here. Oh yes, I see some water. <laughs> We can go on, on this side. Yeah, let's let's go on the side so In, you can see it's from the, different, uh, different. This this fountain Marie is 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 uh, much more recent. Oh, okay. So it's not from the time of Louis XIV. No, but the um, the game, the the show with the the water, you would have something of the kind uh, back then. Oh yeah. It's just by turning and closing the tap, you make more water go in one jet or the next. But it's amazing here. And the water dances with the music. That's really nice. That's really nice. Yeah. Okay. Well, let's and because that one is electric, uh, it works most days. So that, that even if you're not here on a, a day of the Fountain Show or a night of the Fountain Show, uh, that one works usually, and it's it's pretty cool. Now. <laughs> yeah, it's maybe because you don't see, but there's quite a lot of people, so we try to make our way. Yeah, yeah, we're gonna try to do the VIP garden uh, once again because I, I like being alone, not at night again with a candle, but in general, that would be nice. So, okay, so and in general, people were walking like us, or I, I just imagine they were probably taking a horses or little calèche or carriage something not not in this part of the garden there is a map of the garden maybe oh yes a that's look. a good point okay let's, let's that's a very good point so where are we Bertrand? so we started where right here okay so that's I, the castle i feel like i'm doing the the forecast <laughs> uh, right here yeah, show us. <laughs> So we, we, we started right here by the uh, uh, parterre of the Orangerie. And then we walked this way. What you see in the darker color is the palace. And so we walked from here all the way there to see the pond of Latona, all the way down here. And then we've done this diagonal. Okay. So here is the fountain of Saturn I was mentioning. The one of Bacchus or Dionysus, Ceres and Flora. So the four seasons. And the king is here in the middle of them. We are now going to go this way because I want to show you the Bosque de la Colonnade. It's, it's probably the most beautiful. And then we'll reach the uh, the one of Apollo, which is also quite uh, stunning. Okay. So yeah, so we were talking about how they were uh, in the garden. So they were walking, taking horses. So because you, you can you can uh, there is a school of horse no still now. Yes, there's yes. A... There, there's a very great uh, horse riding school in Versailles. They have uh, for dressage, and it's really one of the top in the world. Um, and they do have uh, shows for the public, but it's it's hard to get tickets because you don't have so many seats. But it's on. I, I believe it's on Saturday mornings. Okay. So you know when you, you when you add all of this, that really makes the two days here uh, at Versailles. Yeah, and there is this beautiful uh, five-star hotel called Trianon yes. Trianon Palace. So you can, uh, you can I've, really... I've had high tea there, but I've never uh, had a room. Yeah, well, me neither. <laughs> but you can spend a great weekend in Versailles, feeling like a princess and a king. And yeah. Okay, so now we are getting back to those bosquets that are kind of scary. <laughs> well, yeah. they're, 
I think there are too many people with us now to be no, scared. No, 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 it's gonna be fine. But it's true that at you know, at night, you know, anything could happen. Yeah, that's why being a being a lady is good when you have all your crew with you. Yeah, so yeah. it was not you, you couldn't. I'll be your musketeer. Yeah, I'll yeah, because you, you you could never go anywhere alone when you were uh, a lady, right? You always have a or chaperone uh, or yes. or someone following you. So not you were never never really alone. So it would be hard for having affairs, for example, or flirting, because you always have someone watching you. So you have to be. Exactly. Uh, it's you know it's as if you were constantly on a live tour on YouTube with other people <laughs> watching what you do watching your every move uh, but yeah they most of the time if you wanted to have an affair as a young lady uh, you would have to have a chaperone okay uh, with you ah. and that was quite quite difficult uh, but otherwise there would be uh, tricks you know i don't have to teach you you've been to military school right what just <laughs> my mom is watching Okay, now we're getting to another fun thing. Yes. <laughs> Let's focus on that. And <laughs> so you say this one is called like colonnade, and obviously we see a lot yes. of columns. It looks amazing. It's like we're going into a gladiator arena or or very theater much, yeah. or yeah. yeah. There is something very impressive when you just go. Oh, and it, we are surrounded by fountains. Wow. It is extremely noisy with all this water. So beautiful, though. The fountains are, uh, are just on the side. They're not in the middle. I mean, there is no, no nothing in the middle. They no, are all around us. Not for this one. It is wow, on the side. Loving it. And the That's reason why I'm saying they are very noisy, it's on purpose. Because if you are not close to someone, that person will not hear you speak. Ah, so it's... Let's, it's, let's try. Okay. Okay, guys. So um, I'm going to leave the microphone to Marie and to walk just a few steps away. So we can't hear him. No, because of the sound. So we have to be, we have to be very close to you. You have to be very close. And this is because in this first king, the king can have private discussion without organizing a private meeting. Ah. So for instance, you have an ambassador of a certain country and you want to, you know, negotiate terms of peace or something like that, but you don't want to do it too publicly in case things go wrong. Well, you come here. And no one can hear what you say. So now we can have a private conversation. Now we can have <laughs> <laughs> Really? <laughs> I was sure of that. This is an incredible place. Um, yeah. And so it's running and it's, every day. And it's all made of marble. Really all beautiful. of what you see here, it's, so beautiful. it's all made of uh, marble. The, the white marble comes from Italy, from Carrara. And the pink marble comes from France, from the Pyrenees, wow. like me. Can you can you hear the music? Can you hear the music um, also? So if you want to leave a little comment, uh, I'm gonna watch your comment also on the, the channel. So don't hesitate. This is amazing. I'm just gonna put it back to being a fountain because it's amazing. Maybe we should go around the statue in the center. It's called the Rapt of Proserpina. It's not a very uh, nice story, but it's part of the uh, Roman uh, Greek mythology. It's to explain the reason for the four seasons. Uh, we should go a little bit more to the right. And with the, the fake smoke, they, it makes it look even more dramatic. So if you look up, we'll see a, a big guy with a big beard. And that is Pluto. Pluto is the god of the underworld, the, the, the god of the, the of world of, of death, exactly. Mm -hmm. And he's brother of uh, Jupiter or Zeus for, for the Greeks. But here in Versailles, we mostly use the, the Roman names in the mythology. And as he's looking at the world uh, above, for the world of the living, he's finding this uh, girl, this muse called Proserpina, and he thinks she's very much to his liking. So he goes above the surface, from the world of, of the dead to the world of the living, and he kidnaps her. And that's what we see. So he's taking her, and you can see that she's not really uh, okay with that because she's trying to escape from him, and one of her friends is trying to uh, keep her with her. And so this is an amazing statue, which is made to be walked around. So we are doing cycles around it. Because when Proserpina's mother 
will find out she is the goddess of the earth, she will stop feeding the earth because she's so sad. And so nature will start to die. It's the first winter ever. Pluto has now to negotiate with his brother Jupiter, who is saying, you can't do that. We can't have Earth die. So it will be okay to send Proserpina back to Earth six months a year. And six months a year, she comes back to him. And so the first three months she's on Earth, nature restarts, it's the spring. Then it gets to its peak, it's summer. And then when Proserpina leaves her mom to go back to um, the inferno, well, it's the fall, and then it's the winter. And so this is the uh, another uh, illustration of the seasons. In, uh, <laughs> I think you should film the statue more than I like, me. I like, no, it's just because behind you have some, uh, some laser coming. So I don't know what's going on, but yeah. Yeah, as, as, the, as it's getting darker, there will be more uh, lights uh, shows. Maybe, yeah, maybe we can go a little bit further so we can see uh, and the statue and the laser. What they were do they are doing. I don't know if it's showing. No, maybe not. Not yet. Okay. Let's, yeah, let's go with this further. But this is this is really the 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 most important statue. I mean, artistically speaking, in the entire garden. By Girardon. So it's a French. All the statues were made by French sculptors, but they were highly um, influenced by the uh, uh, by the Latin and the, by the ancient Roman. The idea of this garden is also to create a new Rome. So Louis XIV really wants to have the best of the best. So Italian inspiration, Roman inspiration, but with a French twist. And it worked because after Versailles was built, the rest of Europe wanted to follow the French taste and no longer follow the Italian Renaissance. So we won. So we won, we won that one, uh, but you know, it's it's good to have our moment. Yeah. So for us, it, it was it was Versailles, which lasted for a, a hundred years, and then the French Revolution started. Um, yeah. <laughs> and eventually, Versailles was um, left, was uh, put under locks, and today it's a museum with great evening shows. There's a lot of people here. Yeah. Okay, so we're gonna go. We're gonna go down now to the Grand Canal. But I think it's nothing compared to uh, a regular year. You mean? Oh no! You you know what? It was almost sold out, so. They, they don't, you can't have too many people at once. So here in Nami, you can go on a bike, right? I mean, some people, they do ride, uh, it's very dramatic. Okay, um, it's also it's also a weird choice we made of making Versailles just after the Bastille Day. Is that something intentional? Is it to bring the revolution in Versailles or something like that? I, probably, <laughs> there's probably a bit, uh, a bit of that. Um, but Versailles today, and actually it's been for nearly 200 years, is a museum dedicated to the history of France, whether it was a monarchy or when it starts a republic, an empire. Inside Versailles, you have a huge collection dedicated to Napoleon. Uh, it's one of the biggest museums if you are a fan of Napoleon. Next year, we're going to celebrate the the 200th anniversary of the death of Napoleon. Uh, so Versailles is a place to go if you want to, to know about him. So it really celebrates not just Louis XIV. Obviously, he's the creator of Versailles, so uh, he's quite present. Uh, but also the revolution, so Napoleon, and nowadays the, the Republic. Uh, there's a, there's a, a, nice, a very cool statue here. It is Achilles, the great fighter, dressed as a girl. Ah, yeah, a lot of people are, are shocked when they see Louis XIV having heels also and, uh, and having thighs. And also, it's, uh, the fashion evolved um, because for a long time it was, was okay for a man to wear makeup and a wig and a lot of uh, little ribbons and stuff, stuff like that. It, it was 
exactly the uh, not maybe not the opposite of today, but for men, yes, you were you were putting makeup on your face. It was uh, okay, to, and they had this. Um, um, but it was horrible. It was made of grinded lead. So yeah, apparently they had those very very poor skin because of the the lead yeah, that was inside the powder. Horrible skin, horrible teeth. Horrible hygiene. And and the wig also, there's this the whole thing about keeping the wig into the, the cage so the rats won't go to the to eat the, the wig. I mean, yeah. The conditions were not great. But let's say to be beautiful at the time you had to be white, white. And um I don't know if it's that's a legend, but I also heard that um they say that the blue, the, the blue veins, the, the blue blood is coming from the fact that if you have your skin so transparent, you can see the blue veins through your skin. So that means if you have your beautiful white transparent skin you're not a worker so you're probably a aristocrat and so that's uh um, i don't know if it's and a legend or if it's true or, but I, I heard that that's the blue vein is coming from yeah i I, I have never heard another version okay so, so we'll but, go we'll go with that one okay <laughs> <laughs> so now we are just in front of the last yeah, the, the, fountain of the of the garden so do you think there is a Special thing. I, I saw some fireworks just earlier, so I wish there's a bit, yeah, of, of fire games uh, get, getting behind. back here. Okay, so what are we looking at? Is it is it uh, the best uh, angle? You think? Yes. Okay, maybe I can zoom in a little bit. Here we go. Okay. Okay. So so what is? Uh, I see some horses and exactly. and someone blowing maybe a uh, some kind of. Uh, oh no! I see also a lady in the middle. Is it a lady? It's Apollo. Oh, it's Apollo, of course. Right. This is the rising of Apollo. So you have Apollo here in his carriage, and he's emerging from the sea. So this is symbolized by this very, very tall uh, water jet. And he's rising from the sea on his carriage with four horses. So you can see the four horses right there. Yeah, maybe during the day it's easier, but yeah, we can, we can guess them. Yes. And around you have creatures that are half fishes, half men, they're called the tritons, and they are blowing uh, shells, like trumpets, and so there's water going out of it. So this is really the, the triumphing moment of Apollo, when after the dark of the night, he's bringing the light, and it was the same, um, as you say, the same idea once again with Louis XIV, which is to bring the light to France, and to Europe after ages in the dark. So when you say light, you like knowledge and, and, and... exactly like Versailles, mm -hmm. like promoting the arts. Because if, if you uh, if you turn around, uh, you you will see the the chateau which starts to be uh, lit up. And really, there is this idea that before Louis the Fourteenth, I mean, it's his idea, but before him, the country is okay but not so great. Well, he, he the sun is going to make France number one on the planet. And and it worked for a while. But it still is, no? Oh, sorry guys. Yes, in our hearts, yes. <laughs> but that, that can be uh, debated. Okay, so here we have a nice perspective on the grass um, and the castle that is at the end of it. It's getting, yeah, it's getting more light by the time. And uh, yeah, more and more people are coming as well. So I'm just hoping that we're not going to be too crowded here. Okay, so um, from here to the castle, how, how long do you think we have? Like maybe two, three kilometers? Uh, maybe less? I would say one, yeah, maybe one mile. But that, that's quite a walk. So That is, yeah. So um, yeah, I know that for some people being in the garden, it's uh, more complicated because you have to walk. And so that's why there are some little golf uh, carts. So we didn't do that tonight, which I'm, I'm quite disappointed to be honest. I would love to go on a golf cart with you or maybe a little carriage with horses. So maybe next time, maybe we should do that you, next time. You, you, you need a lot, huh? You, you need the gardens to be empty, you need your I carriage. I need my dress, I need my people around my dress, yes. Yeah, I mean, I want to experience Versailles like the, the true way. Right? Well, there is a way. What? You can actually visit Versailles without anybody else. Um, it costs a little bit of money, ah. uh, but you know, if you love, you don't count, right? <laughs> uh, so, uh, yes, it is possible. They, they've been doing this now for a few years where you can visit the uh, the garden or the or the chateau uh, after hours. So they, the, the opening hours for the public, they remain the same, uh, but you can actually visit it without anybody else. Wow. 
uh, and you can also rent the gardens for a party. Um, I'm sure you guys back home, you've heard of the Kardashian. Uh -huh. So when Kim Kardashian and Kanye West got married, they had a pre-party here uh, in Versailles. There's been other people who've had uh, parties here in Versailles. Uh, they were uh, quite, it was quite big in the French press because uh, it was part of a financial scandal with Carlos Ghosn, uh -huh. the former uh, CEO of uh, Renault, the French car, who had his 60th birthday here at Versailles uh -huh. with, with staff dressed as they were dressed at the time of Louis XIV. Okay? Why not? And it was all paid with public money and corporate money. So, you know, there was a, big, a bit of a scandal. He was, have you, you haven't heard about that? Yeah, yeah, I, I did, but not in the detail. Like, I didn't knew they were actually dressed as, you the, know. The guy was then arrested in Japan and he escaped. We don't know how, most probably in a cello case, okay, like that, in a cello case, and he's now hiding in Lebanon. Okay. So that's the kind of people who do party uh, here at Versailles. Okay, so maybe I, I won't, I won't uh, steal money from the French government to do that. Um, but okay, that's good to know that we can actually do that. Okay, so where should we go for finishing? Like, do you, do you think there is one spot that you want to show? Like uh, over there? Yes, I would yeah? like to show you one last uh, grove. Okay. Okay. Yes. There's a, it's a bit of a walk. Okay. Uh, but it's my favorite one. It's called the Bath of Apollo. Okay. So it's the, it's Apollo. the sexy one also. Okay. Because after a long day, Apollo needs to be uh, taken care of by muses mm -hmm. and so he's hiding under the oh, sea maybe i can show where oh, we yeah. are right now so you can blow us yes so, so we did so we're the, right the here that was the one here exactly and so now we, we did here. Sat saturn this one colonnade this way and so now we're going to walk that way up to go here you want to talk did you go all the way there okay that's that's going to be a long walk but i'm following you uh, maybe in the meantime you guys can Ask us a few uh, things because yeah, it's, it's a bit of a walk. We'll if you want to see, if you want to see Bertrand, for example, <laughs> that's the moment, guys. <laughs> well, let's, let's get this. <laughs> okay, so let's see the comments. Yeah, let's do that. You can also, um, I don't know if you can film the military there. Sorry. <laughs> yeah, there are soldiers right in front of us. Yeah. Uh, uh, it's really cool. I mean, it's starting to be dark. Yeah, it's too dark. <laughs> too dark. And so with the lights, it's becoming very, very uh, dramatic. Well, there, apparently there is no comment. So people no, just no. loving it. Okay, so maybe we can just say a little hello to... Yeah, everyone. who's there tonight? Okay, so do we have? here now we have oh, so many people. Okay, we have Helen, Trivandra, Jean Dame, John, Cindy, Stephanie, oh my God, Matt, Martin, Patty, Sylvia. Luciana, Rosa, Darren. Oh, Darren, that's, yeah, he's coming. He's coming fairly often, right? Yes. Um, I think we Jessica, start to have our fans. Suzanne, Ken, Sophie, and Jim. <laughs> wow, Arabella, Megan, Stephanie. Okay, so we have a lot, a lot of people tonight. That's pretty cool. No questions? Yeah. Everything was no, super okay. clear? It's, it's super clear. Okay, so we're just going to go until this fountain, right? That's the... Yes. Okay, perfect. Okay. We, we're trying. We know it's uh, it's a bit of a distance, so we're, we're trying to make it uh, fast, which is why you can start to hear okay, let's <laughs> breathe a bit more heavily. Okay, so for for me, uh, that's my first time at Mice in Versailles, and uh, I have to say that I'm surprised that we have so much space, especially when I saw a lot of people queuing in the beginning. We made a, a picture of us uh, queuing, and we we're thinking that's going to be forever. But no, there's still space. It's just that we have to find we have to find the good uh, the good way in. So thanks to Bertrand, we can just avoid the queue and it's good and the line. <sighs> okay, so this is that. No, this is not. It's, no, but it's almost there. It's almost there. Okay. So I can imagine at the time, like I'm wearing, I'm not, I'm not wearing heels. You can see I'm wearing those little sandals. Yeah, it's a good idea when you visit Versailles. You want to be wearing uh, comfortable shoes. Yeah. Because we walk a lot. Uh, as guides, we always tell you, no, it's just two minutes away, but we make you walk a much more than that. He's telling you that. <laughs> I'm always the one saying that, let's have a break. <laughs> let's have a glass but of champagne there, But there's somewhere. so much to see. I understand that, you know, people can be a bit in a rush. You don't have, uh, you know, so many days off. So, you know, but Versailles is such a wonderful palace. 
and a wonderful garden and a wonderful estate and a wonderful city that you really want to, um, to show as much as possible, actually. This is a beautiful one. So this is the summer, right? Or it, spring? It's spring, exactly. That's spring, okay. You see all the flowers, that is flora. Flora is the, is the goddess of the spring, the goddess of the flowers. Fleur in French, flower in English, flora in Latin. Mm -hmm. And it's part of this four season cycle. But it, it's really great because they have regilded all these fountains. It was not the case uh, in this winter. I think the last tour uh, of Versailles I did was maybe March 6th or 7th, something like that. So it was not yet done. I, I believe they have um, taken advantage of the, of the place being closed for a couple of months to do uh, the work, the renovation work, much faster than they usually do. Oh, you know what? We're going to take the uh, side uh, alley. No, I'm scared. Okay, I'm following you. That that is pretty cool. This is this is uh, Bertrand um, trying to lose me now. So <laughs> so okay. So if look look the size of these trees. It's a, it's called a charmille, and it feels like we are in a corridor between the, the crowd on our right. And we can see maybe the people passing here. We can spy on, we can spy on the people passing through. Uh... Exactly, and then you can uh, tell all the gossips to the king, to the queen, to ah, whoever you want. That's the idea, <laughs> that's the idea, to spy the other people, okay. And it also creates this great uh, perspective, which is what Versailles is all about, these straight lines. So I understand that if, you know, Versailles is, is a garden, of a very specific type of gardener. It's an architect before being a gardener. Yeah. So you, you design, Yeah, you can tell, yeah. yeah, you can tell it's more like little streets and big avenues. Exactly. More than just decorations. Uh, you can tell, yeah, it's it's and, and like you say, there is a purpose for everything. So exactly like in a city, you have always a purpose. If you if you love um, you know, little flowers, gardening, etc., you will have a great time at Versailles, but not in the King's Garden. In the Queen's Garden. So Le Petit Trianon? Exactly. Okay. In Le Petit Trianon. Uh, I would love to take you there, but it's 25 minutes away. <laughs> Not today. Not happening tonight, no. <laughs> Le Petit Trianon is, is completely the opposite of that one. It's a private garden. So you don't have to constantly show how great you are, how powerful you are, tell the same story all over and over again. Uh, instead, it's a comfortable uh, garden. You even have a little a fake little uh, village, so a farm, uh, a little cottage, a little windmill. They, they were never uh, habited. I mean, they're here just for the decor, but it's a very comfortable garden with fishes, little rivers, little bridges, lots of flowers. And that's the Queen's uh, private garden. Okay, so but when you say the Queen, so we think about Marie Antoinette, but uh, what, yes. who are the other Queens that lived in Versailles that are known? Because we always refer to Marie Antoinette and, and referring to Louis XIV, and they were not even in the same time, so... No, that's true. <laughs> they are the two big stars. Yeah, uh, the but, two big stars. But they, they didn't live at the, at the same time uh, at all. So um, there were three kings and three queens who have lived here in Versailles. So the most famous king is the first one, the one who built it, Louis XIV. Uh, and then his two successors, it's easy, it's Louis XV and Louis XVI, who lost his head. Uh, and he is this one who was married to Marie Antoinette. Okay. Looks oh, like... you arrived to another fountain. Okay. Oh, wow. That's, very nice. That's the summer one. It's gorgeous with the, you see, uh, as the sun has, the sun set maybe uh, a few minutes ago. It's not yet dark, but the lights are getting uh, incredible in the water. It looks like a fountain of gold. Really beautiful. So we, we're looking at, so it's the summer. Oh, yeah, because you have, you have um, the crops. You have the crops, yeah, everywhere. They can the crops, under. the cereals. And she's called Cirrus. So that's the origin of the world. Ah, this is amazing. I want to take pictures and film at the same time. I'm frustrated. So Remember, good. there's Maria behind us. Yes, She's taking sure. great photos. Yes. This is amazing. I love it. Wow. 
We want to go back. Okay. Uh, just this way. Okay. So we get it inside the. Uh, uh, you know what? It looks like it's the exit only. So we'll enter the other way. No, no, no. You don't want to try. No, this this will be the exit, and so we it's just there by the corner. So this one we're going to see is the only uh, bosque in English. It's called a grove. The only one that wasn't built uh, at the time of Louis the Fourteenth. Okay, so when it was built in the very late years of Versailles, um, under King Louis the Sixteenth and Queen Marie Antoinette, mm -hmm. and the fashion for garden had changed. Okay, okay? so you will see that. Compared to the other ones, we won't find straight lines uh, or, you know, very sharp angles. Instead, it will feel like we are entering a new world, uh, a lost world somehow. The, the world of the, of the gods, the goddesses and the nymphs of the ah, mythology. So we are like leaving our to go to some kind of paradise. We're getting into that, a lost uh, world in another dimension between us, uh, you know, humans and then the gods. Um, so we, we have... Rosa, that is telling us, yes, uh, it's beautiful, but she agreed with me that it would be scary at night. Um, and we have also Harry that say, what about the potager du roi? Because it's so close. But yes, we, we mentioned that one at the beginning. Wow. Um, beautiful view. Yeah. But it seems the bosque is not, that's not the entrance, right? So yes, maybe... I guess they will have us go all the other way. You know what? We're, go we're going to show you what the palace looks yeah, like now. Yeah, first we can do go to the palace and then, yeah, see. Okay. And we need to keep oh, some stories so for you. Uh... Oh, it's amazing. Let's go over there. No? Just enjoying the view. The I view, think, the I music, think, the I fresh air. I think it's now or never for dancing, that's all. <laughs> Happy now? <laughs> I'm the worst dancer, and she know it. No, you're not. Okay, guys, if you want to tip Bertrand, <laughs> that's a good moment because he just danced for you. Yeah, the, and you that, that was dancing, amazing. You can tip it more. No, thank you very much for, for watching this video tonight. We're going to continue a little bit more, but I think, yeah, we saw most of the gardens, so that was, that was a great... That was a great moment. I really yeah, enjoyed it. And, and I mean, we're so glad you guys are following us weeks after weeks because otherwise, I mean, we would be doing something else of our Saturday night. Yeah. And once again, we would not have come here. And it's so fun. I mean, to rediscover also those places, especially after lockdown and confinement and all of that, just and being the space, outside the air. again, it's, uh, it's such a pleasure and it's great to be uh, here sharing, you know, this moment with you from all over the world because you're coming from so many different countries. And um, yeah, and so tonight, sharing a little bit of Versailles with these classy fountains. Look at that, just giving you the best. <laughs> <laughs> so thank you so much for watching us. I think there is other, we have Let's a, see other there bonjour. Are the, there so are other from, questions. From Lachon and Daryl, Kathy. So hello to you. And uh, yeah, and for, Next week, what should we do? I think, I think we should do another castle. Should I go to the Loire Valley? I think. I are you Are you really going to do it? I think I'm going to go to the Loire Valley. So okay, next week I will go to the Loire Valley to visit a castle, a French castle, because that's my new passion and my new OB for this summer to visit all the French castles in France. So which one is it going to be? Um, I'm still hesitating between Chenonceau and Chambord. Ooh. We will see. I will tell you. We will see in the newsletter. <laughs> <laughs> Wow. So Chenonceau or Chambord, after Versailles, it's not a bad choice. The light is just crazy. Wow. My God. Yeah, it's worth coming at night. Look at that. The, the, the staircase is full. Looks like a, a stand of a theater. So What time is it? It's like 10 past 10, something like that? Yes. It's not yet dark. So it was a bit tricky to do this tour. We were a little bit hesitating because filming with the sun in our face or at dark, it's, uh, we were uncertain the results would be great. So we hope it was uh, okay for you guys. It is becoming more and more dramatic. 
uh, we have one more hour before the, the garden uh, close. So we're going to go take some photos uh, and we will post photos of the, of the fireworks, which are going to happen uh, just here. It's pretty cool. I'm, so very, now, I'm very, very happy. Yeah, so now we have to find a good spot to sit and to wait for the fireworks. So thank you so much again Merci. for watching us. Merci beaucoup. À la semaine prochaine. See you. Bye bye. And uh, yeah, if you have any question, please don't hesitate or we can answer and thanks. you. Also, I want to say thank you very much for all the emails we receive every week. Um, they are, it's really great to see that we are, um, uh, you know, that you watch this and you're happy about it. It's also great to have your um, advice, your ideas, your comments, sure. because we, we do this for you. So the, the more you tell us, uh, you know, how, what the result is and, you know, if you can hear as well, or even if you have suggestions for places you'd like to see. Um, yeah, yeah, we, we noticed about the Père Lachaise. We didn't do it yet, but we're still thinking about when. But uh, yeah, there's an opening time that is a bit we, tricky. So yeah. you guys would have to work um, to wake up quite early if we do the Père Lachaise. Yeah, so yeah, the Père Lachaise that is uh, on the wishing list. We have also a tour about more about, um, I think, uh, different communities in Paris. Yes. So we do have already ideas and we are kind of scheduling all of that, but it's uh, only once a week. So, so next week. <laughs> Next week, another castle with me. Another castle with Marie. The week after that? Um, kind of I think know. we're getting back to Paris for maybe a dark Paris or something. That's, ah, yeah, that's, the Paris of the dark that, dark that, legends. That could be fun. Um, yeah, so the yeah. one with so that's goofy be the, stories. Yeah, that's going to be for the two next weeks. And then, then we'll see. Surprise is surprise. I think the week after that, I, I will take you guys out of Paris for another Again. French city. Yeah. That was great in Bayonne. So thank you so much for coming down. Merci à vous. Bye, guys. Au revoir. Thank you so much. Bye-bye. I'm going to feel, feel you dance. No, 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 no way.